check. You're back with Mowgli, the kid ART behind the camera. We're at my man Corey Johnson's house, CJ Pottery. Um, I know y'all are interested to see what this man is getting into, so he was uh, welcoming us into his home. So let, let's go down and say what's up to the man. I'm gonna ask him a couple questions. Making pots as usual. What's going on? So, at MowglySun.com, basically, you know, we, we make music, but we love art in general. So, um, this is a man I've known from uh, Westchester. When I when I attended the university, I met him. You know, it was my sophomore year, um, and uh, we we had a hip hop connection. This man does a little spit thing, but what what he does does is he, he makes this stuff, man. Sculpting art. I don't even know what to call it because you know that's not my genre. So that's why we're here to ask him a couple questions. So. Right off the bat, we're gonna, gonna say, what, what you getting into right here, my man? This uh, making pots is also called throwing pots. Mm -hmm. You just pretty much uh, start with a block of clay on the wheel, start spinning it really. Uh, you gotta use like plenty of water, get it centered, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just walk you through the whole process really. Exactly, that's what, that's what we're here for. So we're gonna go through this whole process because as you can see, we got around here we got some you know finished finished art here we got some stuff that still has to be fired which i just learned that word and obviously when you when you heat it up i remember like middle school i was doing classes like that but uh he's gonna walk us through this whole process so we really you know can get a grasp of that real quick so this one is done so i just gotta let it dry out mm -hmm. and then uh once it's dried out, I'll flip it over and I'll trim the bottom, make it flat. But yeah, what most people don't realize, as far as making pots, like you literally start with like nothing but a block of clay. Okay, so this is where we start at. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. The evolution. Of it. And uh, that's what really like draws me to it, because you pretty much start with nothing and make something out of it. Not only something, but something that you and everybody else can use on like a day-to-day -day basis. Exactly. Now, where is there a special place that you know a lot of sculpting clay comes from? You know, a region of the of the world, or, or is it a, a type of thing that? I mean, this common? is actually uh, made in the USA, okay. but um, yeah, you can get it wherever. I mean, around here, the best place around, and the nearest place is called the Ceramic or the Clay Studio. Nah, excuse me, the Ceramic Shop uh -huh. in uh, Philly, okay. North Philly. So I got to go down there. Actually, just got back and uh, got two tons of clay. But what I'm doing right now is just it's called wedging. Uh -huh. You pretty much just uh, get the air pockets out of the clay and uh, just get it before you uh, really get going the wheel. Actually, okay. and I just want to get into like a nice uh, cone shape. And that for for anything that you do, you would start off like yeah, that. literally every time start start just like this. I mean, okay. that's just the first step. But uh, I'll take you over here. Now, is there like a certain temperature that you need to keep clay at? Is there, you know, is, is there anything that could be bad? Oh, uh, it just can't be uh, stored anywhere in like temperatures that are like below freezing or obviously like over 100, 100 degrees because it'll just like get hard. And you also got to keep uh, it like wrapped up in a bag or else it'll dry out. Okay, okay. But uh, this thing right here is called a bat and uh, it's pretty much just like a plate to uh, start the piece on just so uh, it's easy to lift off then. And you said that's called a bat? Yeah. Okay. You can throw right on the wheel head, uh -huh. but um, I prefer this. It's just easier to lift the pieces off. Something like these cups, I'll twist them and uh, I'll just lift them right off because they're like, they're small. Okay. So, yeah. it's something this size. It's easier to use a bat. So what I'm doing right now is just uh, centering the clay, and when you center the clay, it's mm -hmm. so it's spinning like perfectly in your hands. Okay. I'm sure this was a process that took a little bit to get down. That yeah, this like is actually the hardest way. step to learn, like for beginners. Uh -huh. Yeah, because that is coming out smooth. Now, does that that bat does that have um? Different speeds? Is there is there different speeds? Yeah, I mean everything's thing? controlled down here by the pedal. And okay. Once you set it, it stays at uh, that speed. And when you're centering it, that's the fastest. Really, you'll turn it, and then as you like get on with the steps, then you slow the wheel down. Okay. Control that with a pedal, like you know, a grocery store conveyor belt. <laughs> <laughs> So now, as, as we get into this, I'm sure you know everyone's wondering, you know, what, when did you first get into this? You know, obviously, when, when, 
The first time I actually uh, threw a pot was in 10th uh, grade, and I wasn't like an art guy at all. Like I actually played soccer my whole life and never really even really cared about the arts. I mean, doodle on the side of notebooks in class, of course, but it's about as artistic as a guy for me. But um, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny because even when I first learned, um, I wasn't really into it at all. Like I said, I wasn't an art kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really give it a chance, and I actually paid somebody uh, to make my first couple pots for me. Okay. But um, for whatever reason, I took class again the following year as a junior, and I had a different teacher, and she like made me do the wheel. So um, I don't know, man. I can't even explain it. Like I kind of just picked it up quicker than everybody else, and I was just hooked. I mean, just it just took off. From yeah. Next, thing you know, I was like skipping lunch to go make pots. It's, even at the time, it was like mad weird. Right. And now you're here. Yeah. Saying, so where, where'd all that time go? Now, that sponge, I noticed the sponge is that for, um, what, what would that be for? It's just really to uh, grab more water and just like, because you got to constantly add water to it. Okay. And that's obviously what this bucket is. It's just a yeah. bucket of water, but obviously. Well, it's kind of. Because of all the clay that's mixed in there. Yeah, exactly. Called slip. Mm -hmm. But this is actually a uh, cross between. A clay body and a porcelain body, okay. and I like it because it fires to like a like a whiter body, mm -hmm. and uh, glazes come out a lot more nicer on it. Okay, and it's just a finer material too. And then for the for the viewers out there, glaze would be that that's the process after everything gets fired. Yeah, that's the very last correct. thing you do. So it gets fired uh, once before that, and then once it comes out. Those spots over here have been fired once. That's the yeah. next step for them. Okay. And this is that. Everything you see here, people, that is all hand done. That is all by him. That is that is hard work. That's labor right there. Blood, sweat, and tears. That's what I'm talking about. Now, obviously, you do all your stuff by hand. Are, are there manufacturers out there that... Is, is, is this a robot process at this point? Are there, are there computers? Um, doing there this? are... I guess at one point, everything is... Right. Started either made by hand or uh, it's what you called casted, and uh, what you do is once it's uh, casted or you make a cast of something or a mold of something, then you can uh, just make like multiples of that. Then, but yeah, there's not too many people out there like making handmade pots. That's for sure, and even like flower pots and stuff. You see, like sometimes those actually are like hand thrown. It's, by like people in Indonesia or China or wherever and you talk about someone throwing fast and someone being like really good at it these people whip up pots in literally less than five minutes wow wow that is that's crazy so basically what I'm what I'm getting a, a grasp for here is you know he puts the clay on on the bat you know starts spinning and then we have water you know to keep it moist and now Obviously, from there, that's where the creative part takes over, right? I see the vision. Obviously, this thing is transformed in front of my eyes in here in five minutes. Um, is that just a lot of just a lot of hand and finger manipulation? Yeah, so, everything's uh from beginning to end is really just like uh, keeping your hands and your fingers like mm -hmm. synchronized, mm -hmm. and that's the key as far as uh, getting it to where you want. But um, that is wild, yeah. And having like a steady hand, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is wild. Woo. That is art at its finest. Now, let's see, we hear, we hear the music in the playback in the background. What, what do you like? What do you like rocking to while you're working? With? Anything, but uh, this is a uh, pretty lights Pandora. Okay. Just beats, man. Right. We don't we don't need lyrics for everything. Nah. Sometimes nah, it's better I to doing say stuff nothing. like this. Yeah, so this was a tree. We came in to say what's up, and the man, the man was just throwing us a pot today. Man, that's what's up. Now, obviously, you make anywhere from pots to any different type of, you know, uh, plates and, and you know, what, what you, what yeah, other, I mean, other kind of stuff so you get into mugs, bowls, mm -hmm. uh, cups, mm -hmm. teapots, vases, um, and kitchen hardware. Yeah, really, uh, a lot of functional stuff. That's mm -hmm. what I'm chasing. That's what I'm after. Mm -hmm. Like I said in the beginning, it's pretty cool to be able to make stuff that people actually use on a regular day basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can attest to that. I definitely, I've copped a couple, and, you know, I definitely see more in my future because, you know, got to make my house look nice, right, you know. My mom loved it, by the way. Shout out to my mom real quick.
But what, what, what would be the craziest thing you ever made? Is if there's anything that's, that was that, that abstract? Uh, probably when my senior year when I was like making pots and then uh, calling them apart really and trying to like place them back together and like trying to find like good aesthetics through that and like what looks good. That was like a long process because uh, I mean obviously there was plenty of failures. That's the thing with this stuff like there is to me there's no precious pot like I've lost so many mm -hmm. it's just you can't like there's no way you could possibly be a ceramic artist or a potter and and like really I mean yeah like care about losing a pot it's frustrating for sure but mm -hmm. if I if I cared I would not still be making them exactly because there's gonna be there's gonna be many more yeah now uh when when would you say when when like did you get like when, you know start thinking you know this is something I seriously want to pursue wise you know uh well I started out at uh Delaware County Community College my freshman year and uh I still think it's a blessing that I ever did that because I talked to five advisors while I was there and I was just taking like my general education courses I still had no idea what I actually want to major in and uh I talked to five advisors four of them were terrible and the one pretty much helped me narrow it down that at the time I, I thought like this is what I wanted and then it just so happened that's what I went on to do and transferred to Westchester after uh, my first year at Delco mm -hmm. and just like honestly like made like more and more pots like each each semester yep hundreds of pots it was good it was sweet there because um I didn't have like a limit to like how many I could make and I just honestly like spent countless hours in the studio every day so uh, so Westchester's were you actually in the art program then? Back yeah, then? yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, graduated with a bachelor's in fine arts, concentration in ceramics and sculpture. Okay, that is dope. There we go. So, so you can you can give them a, a good a good thumbs up on recommendation there. For sure, and they're not even known uh, for their art department, but I always like to tell people they had everything I need. It's not about what you have in life; it's what you make of it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. So then equipment wise, you know, um, obviously you have this bat here and then we, we have the, the kiln. That would be the next step you said. Um, what, what other things, you know, are, are involved? Is it is a lot of everyday stuff around the house or is there is a lot of specific stuff that you need to buy? I mean, the wheel, mm -hmm. the wheel and the clay is really like the main thing you got to start with. And then the kiln's the next most expensive part. Um, it helps to have a wedging table or a table to work off of. Mm -hmm. Good to have a sink, obviously too, and then just like simple ceramic tools. But yeah. that's the other like real cool thing about it is you really don't need too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than the kiln and the wheel, it's it's pretty relatively inexpe inexpensive. Just a little bit of natural earth, some clay, and yep, in your hands, that's all you need. It's the thing. That's all it is, is. Is just dirt. Now, for for someone that would you know be aspiring or wanting to get into this, you know, what would you what would your uh, any tips or be for, patient. For, Work hard, and uh, like I said, there's there's no precious pot. The only way you get good is by making hundreds and hundreds of pots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, yeah, on the, on the average, then how how uh, how many pots would you, on a day where you come down and work here? Well, how many pots do you say you can you bang out in a day? Or in, in how now that I'm doing this full time, mm -hmm. I can make anywhere from twenty to forty pots in a day. It all depends on what I'm making and and how I'm, like like what I'm trying to focus on as far as what mm -hmm. like what I want to make that day really I mean uh, like teapots for example are probably one of the most complicated things to do in ceramics because like they have the most parts and uh, just requires the most time because like yeah you see the making part right here but uh, after you gotta wait till these dry and you gotta catch them at the right stage mm -hmm. to uh, do the next step like for a teapot putting it together at if there's a little bit of a waiting process, I've been oh, yeah. to try out. And in school, it was hard because I mean, I got other classes, I got work, and the thing I would do to help me is um, just wrap things up. Because mm -hmm. if you leave them out in the open in the air, then uh, they'll just dry out. Exactly, exactly. Now, as far as other artists go, do you have any influences that I would be new to that game as far as names go? Yeah, it's um. 
I mean, there's a wide range of ceramic work, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know from talking to me today that I'm really interested in like the functional ceramics. Mm -hmm. uh, one name is uh, Ryan Greenheck. He's out of uh, Philadelphia. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of people that went to Alfred University, which is in uh, upstate, upstate New York, is uh, it's like the best school known for ceramics right now. And that's okay. that's my dream. That's my goal to get there. Alfred, my, uh, Alfred University. So yeah. Okay. My masters. So then, this one, what, what, what a particular kind of pot would this be then used for? What did you have in mind when you were throwing this one? It's a tall vase. Okay. So you now, when you when you go and do you do you usually make um, the same thing? You know, copies of things, or even if like if you made ten tall vases. You would, would they each be unique in their own way, or do you yeah, no, try to make them pretty much no the pots same? the same. I mean, you can get over time if they're doing it for a long time, you can get pretty close. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like that though, keep it fresh on everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, obviously, you know we, we see the outside of this here, but on the inside, I can imagine is there the, does clay build up on the inside where you have to you know push it down obviously to make that bottom? Is that is that yeah, a same part? thing. It's about like keeping it uh wet in there too so your fingers can like uh -huh. pretty much glide as so you do it. So you have to pay attention to the inside and the outside there. And uh, you can't leave water in the base. Okay. I probably have some in there right now but... You get a good look inside there. Into the abyss. Obviously, you have your own website, cjpottery.com, correct? Yup. Um, is there any other like local artists you work with around here? Or is it, uh, uh, not currently, just mm -hmm. doing my own thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, trying to make new connections because it's obviously hard, you know, trying to pursue something like rap or hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like, you obviously want people to be around you that are working on the same thing so you can relate. Cause, exactly. Help I mean, each other out. Yeah, rap or painting or drawing or making pots, it's all. It's all an art, and uh, it's no steady pay. That's for darn sure that. Yeah, we know that's starving, starving artist yeah. right there. Uh -huh. you know, we all we all know that game. So as far as the throwing, that's pretty much it. And then I'll just take this trim tool here. Okay, I see that. Can go back here right. and cut off the excess that I'm not using. Mm -hmm. Save all my waste to make more clay later. Okay, so basically, you know, you're saying that clay can be recycled? Yep. Okay. Interesting fun fact there. So how does that process? How do you how do you even get started? Uh, there's that? different ways. Um, at school we had a mixer and we would just throw like all this like wet reclaim in a mixer mm -hmm. and then uh, add three different ingredients called dry, and then just pretty much mix it back up and get it back to the consistency of what I started with. Okay. Aspirations go. What do you what do you what do you see for the future? You know, what are you looking to, to do then here with uh, with this talent of yours? I uh, obviously I want to do this till the day I die. Uh -huh. And uh, if there's any way that this can be my job, I will do everything in my power to make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. 
But as far as the near future, just keep working at it every day. Uh, I'm applying for my master's right now to some of the top 10 schools in the nation. But um, if I get my master's in ceramics, then I can teach at the university level. Okay. But yeah, I wouldn't mind to teach. Mm -hmm. That's dope though, the ceramic, the ceramic world. I hope we have opened your eyes up to the ceramic world at this point. You know? I think y'all see a lot of this stuff when you know, you're know you walking in town, you know, our galleries, but this is, this is the behind the scenes stuff. This is that raw stuff. This is what goes into it. And as you can see, like I said, that, that thing has literally been thrown in front of our eyes in what, what like 10, 15 minutes? That's, um, that's wild, you know. I'm sure obviously for a beginner it would take me a little bit longer, but that's why I'm not doing this. <laughs> My favorite question is when people ask me, <laughs> how long does it take you to make that? I tell them uh, eight years. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> it's the truth, I mean, now nah, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even be able to get it, like get anywhere started uh, if you just started out with something like this. It oh takes God, I can imagine. Incredible amount of time. I'm like, this is a thing of beauty when it's done right then too. Ain't that right? What's that? Okay, so that that's that's step one then basically, right? Yeah. And then uh, I threw these cups earlier. Mm -hmm. They're uh, a little bit drier than this, obviously. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I said, it's about catching at the right consistency. And then uh, flip them over and trim the bottom so they're nice and flat. And then uh, these guys will all get handles, like those over there. Okay. Now, is the handle just attached clay on clay, or is there anything else that goes into that, or just? Yeah, I mean, uh, I pull the handles. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole other process that okay. takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I'll. Uh, cross hatch and slip an area on the pot where it's going to go where I'm going to attach the top of the handle mm -hmm. and then I'll put it on. There's different ways you can attach a handle but um, it's pretty much it then after you get them on. It takes another five or ten minutes to add a handle and make it look real nice and then just clean it up afterwards. Now obviously when the handle is put on the other part will be a little bit drier. Does that uh, affect that area? Well, that's what I'm talking about. People like right here, obviously, like I said, you know, it's gonna be a little bit drier, but he's saying he adds a little bit of slip, that's what it's called. Yeah. And that's just what a, almost like an like adhesive glue type. And the thing about those handles and mugs right now is like you can't even pick them up. Mm -hmm. You can't pick a mug up by its handle until it's like completely done. Exactly, I can imagine that. I've had plenty of friends come in and just. Hey, what's up, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> breaks right off. Mm -hmm. So. I think my parents taught me right. They taught me to be polite and not touch, and if you do touch, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> So then the next step, like we said, we come over here to the kiln. I don't know, you want to come over here and, and explain what happens over here then? All yeah, the, pretty much. Uh, all the mechanics of this guy, because this thing, first time, this looks like a beast, yo. Like you talk yeah, about mixing thing, boards and speakers, this thing looks like a, that's taking up, that's wattage right there. How much power does that thing, you know? This mean? can get up to 3,000 degrees. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it just runs off at 220 volts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, once they're leather hard, the pots, then I uh, load this up. Mm -hmm. Just looks up like this. So we we'll get a we we'll get a good look in there. We'll see, see that's the inside of the kiln, and then all the uh, coils you see running around is what heats up, and then just gives it like an even heat. Okay. Okay, so it's almost like a furnace type deal. Then. Yeah. Okay. That's wild. That is a piece of industrial equipment. So you throw them all in there, and then obviously this is stack them with shells, and uh, that's pretty much it. Then you like let it go, and this one's got a self-activated uh, timer, so you just kind of okay. set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. Let me get that. Get that self-activated timer. Looks like the flux capacitor. And then after that, they would they would come up here on this shelf. Like I said, these ones are basically they're, they're waiting to dry out, they're so they're leather hard. You can see the difference. Like these ones I just finished. Mm -hmm. These ones are from a couple days ago. As it dries, or, as it dries, the body gets uh, whiter. And then uh, these guys over here, they've already been fired once. Mm -hmm. That's like now they're hard and okay. And then you said they go. It, there's a repeat. Then you do you fire them twice? Yeah, I'll uh, glaze them. This is the glaze here. Okay. And you can either glaze as far as like paint brushing it on, or uh, you can dip them. Or what I got into is uh, spraying them with an air compressor, mm -hmm. and that's a whole other effect. That's how you get like these lights and dark contrast. But now recently I've been uh, trying to get more into doing some painting. Okay. 
that's what pretty much get me to the next level. Which I wasn't much of an artist before, but as far as like that aspect, mm -hmm. but it's kind of different once I'm painting on pots. Okay, there we go. So it's kind of like rapping on your own beats. Yeah. That's pretty much exactly what it's like. Really. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. You saw you saw it firsthand on MowgliSun.com, my man Corey Johnson. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. It was dope. Um, and come out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let him tell you where you can get at him, all that stuff. But you know, support the man. Come out, and buy some stuff like this. I've, I've already bought countless amounts of things, and uh, the man's just getting better. So look for that name in the future. Like I said, thank you for letting us in your house. And if you want to just, like I said, let them know where they can reach you at, all that good stuff. You know, CJPottery.com. You can follow me on Twitter, CJ Pottery. You can email me at Corey at CJPottery.com. Taking commission orders. Everything's food safe, functional, dishwasher, microwave safe. Holler at me for a gift for your mom for Christmas. I'll be having a Christmas sale. There's a list of all my sales online, and you can catch me later. That's it. Like I said, you heard that MowgliSun.com. Corey Johnson, Pottery, CJPottery.com, better hit that up. And if you don't, too bad you'll be missing out. Peace.